Six weeks. Still no sex. You know, at first I thought it would help me focus. You know, opening night is just around the corner, but... You know, a lot of great minds have brought celibacy to their work. There's Isaac Newton, Glenn Gould, John Ruskin. They were all asexual. I don't know. You know, I thought I'd go against my instincts this time. You know, find someone of a uh, moral fiber, a complete innocent. She's like an ingenue in a, in a, in a Chekhov play. She studies a uh, 19th century Russian literature at Columbia. We're taking it slow. Hmm. Forgive me, but it sounds like you're trying to convince yourself, not me. Well, look, mature people don't go roaming around bars picking up underage girls and manic actresses. They have mature, boring relationships. With no sex, apparently. I think I'm growing. Mm -hmm. You know, Arthur, someone once said that you could look at life the same way you look at eggs. An optimist is always going to look at, at the world sunny side up. And a pessimist, or a, a latent existentialist is always going to look at the world as scrambled. What? What am I? I have a sneaking suspicion you're a latent existentialist. Right now is a misrepresentation of how I feel inside. I can't go so fast. I understand. You're right. You're right. I should take it slow. the same thing every week for five years. I want eggs. Just don't know what kind. Well, they're all the same. Scrambled, sunny side up, poached, they're eggs. Hey, fellas. The usual? The usual. As the hours passed, Arthur and Chandler proceeded to eat beef carpaccio as usual and evolved into innocuous discourse about obscure literary anomalies and various fascist dictators. But it was readily apparent the two were amidst an existentialist conundrum. Well, how are things? You know, with the ingenue. Still no sex. You know, at first I thought it helped me focus on the play, you know? But it's had the uh, antithetical effect. Now all I do is think about sex. Well, I might have an answer for you. I met a girl. She's incredible. Yeah? Is she inflatable? No. Uh, she's a hooker. You're cheating on Teresa with a hooker? Well, come on. Technically, it's not cheating if it's with a hooker. And besides, she prefers the term escort. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? You know, what about, oh, God, what about diseases? I mean, why don't you just go to a bar? I do not have time for that. Subtle flirtations, games. I sure as hell don't want a crazy girl calling me, breaking into my house. I love Teresa. Oh, but I am a man, and I do need sex. Are you hearing yourself? Are you hearing yourself? <laughs> uh, here, just give them a call, and I promise that you will not be disappointed. Mia Sahani. Mia So Soho NY. What is this? Mia Sohoni. Mia Mia Sohoni. Really? Okay. Arthur, the lighting designer needs you up on the booth. They don't understand the cue changes you made this morning. George, can't you see I'm in the middle of something? 
Well, uh, actually, you, you don't appear to be doing anything. I'm thinking! Certain that Sophie could not deny him his sexual advances on the opening night of his play, Arthur had prepared a surprise dinner for the two at the Pierre Regency. He did so to perfection. You, okay? She's an amalgamation of different women. What do you take me for, some halfway reporter? This isn't a fluff piece, this is our lives. I don't want to be your muse anymore. I saw the way you were looking at her. Who? My understudy. You couldn't keep your eyes off her the entire night. Hey, I barely said two words to her. Oh. Calm down. <laughs> oh. Really? Yeah. Maybe, just maybe, you're overreacting just a tiny bit. It is a play. It's make-believe. I want a baby. The timing's all wrong. You know what, but maybe next year. play was a wild success. From the opening curtain to the closing epilogue, the audience was thoroughly captivated. It was by far the most personal work Arthur had ever put on stage. Consequently, the characters were fuller, the insights more insightful, the witticisms more witty, and the anecdotes more anecdotal. He couldn't have asked for anything more. But of course, Arthur had one more request. Don't you think the play's views on relationships is slightly pessimistic? What, what do you mean? All the men are misogynists, like all the women hysterics. I think uh, it's a fairly accurate view of relationships. <laughs> Where's Sophie? She, she left during intermission. She said she was sorry, you know, something important came up. What are you pouting for? God's sakes, we got a hit on our hands. Arthur was at his wit's end. His surprise dinner had been debunked. And for all the successes of his play, he was alone. He couldn't help think of Sophie in the night that could have been. 
It was only then that he came across the business card that Chandler had given him earlier that week. And for a moment, he thought, <clears throat> Hello. Is this Mia? Hello, Mia. Uh, my name is uh, Ted Koppel. What, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? What the hell are you doing here? I... You, <laughs> yeah, that's why you left intermission. <laughs> that's unbelievable, because you're a... You're a hooker? An escort. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize there was a distinction. It's the only way I could pay for tuition. <laughs> you mean the easiest? I mean, I just can't believe this. I mean, you wouldn't have sex with me, but you'd have sex with some anonymous, misogynistic scumbag? It's just my body. With you, it's love. I need both. I can't give you both. You have to pick love or sex. Oh, come on. So which credit cards do you take? How do you take your eggs? Sunny side up. Why? I think I'm a late and existentialist. <laughs> uh, that was a crazy story. <laughs> I know, right? Amazing. <laughs> the thing I can't stop thinking about, though, is, <laughs> is whether or not you, uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're sleeping with my girlfriend. Arthur's play had opened to both critical and financial praise, but something was missing. Over the following weeks, he couldn't help but reflect back on the many inspirations for the play. His failed relationships, misguided conquests, existentialist conundrums. What was their purpose? What did they mean? To what end? Then, one autumn afternoon like any other, Arthur randomly bumped into Chloe on the street. It had been nearly a year since their illicit affair. Chloe was now of age, having celebrated her 18th birthday the previous Sunday, and Arthur was now single. Having resorted to celibacy in the months following the incident at the Pierre Regency, it appeared that timing was fortuitous. The two hit it off immediately. Arthur couldn't help but think of something his uncle had once said. If love is the answer, can you please rephrase the question? <laughs> 